Hopefully this is all working. Hey everybody, greetings. Welcome, welcome to Legacies of Cain, the Vampire the Masquerade uh, show. Perfect timing. <laughs> oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Always perfect timing. Just as I get started. Yeah, that's the way it works in the universe. Anyway, yeah. Yep. So, if you've missed uh, our previous show, last week's show, uh, our group here was in the uh, uh, Shadow Realms, the Shadowlands, the uh, afterlife, effectively, and uh, managed to finish up their mission there and have now uh, traveled back to the real world. The problem is all of them left at various different times and ended up in different places in the world. Save for two, Nathan and Samuel ended up together. Well, and Dawn and Ryan ended up together. Uh, <laughs> yep. So, Dawn and Ryan found themselves in Buenos Aires. Uh, Leslie found himself in the forests of Madagascar. Um, Emil found himself in the middle of the outback in Australia. And of course, Nathan and Samuel found themselves in Vietnam. And probably have the best bet to get back because Samuel has a satellite phone with probable GPS. <laughs> I'm assuming it has GPS. Yeah, Dawn should be fine, too. Well, Dawn and oh, yeah, Ryan, Dawn, Dawn have, was a... they're in a city, but Spot. they have no phone and no money. So they'll figure something out, though. Well, Dawn <coughs> has her phone. She just needs to find a way to charge it. Accurate. Yeah. Also, aren't they in Rio de Janeiro? Yeah. Is Rio de Janeiro in Buenos Aires? Uh, no, it's in Brazil. I was saying okay. Buenos Aires I'm, because I'm not I was, crazy. I was, you know, it's waking up myself brain power wise. Yes, yeah. no, that's fair. That's, uh, yeah, just checking. <laughs> I haven't been doing also, much today that requires massive amounts of brain power yet, so we're we're, we're I'm ramping it up. Yeah, Rio de Janeiro is a different city. Yes, but I believe they are both Brazilian. From Buenos Aires. Actually, I, I was clarifying like... because Umber said, is Rio de Janeiro in Buenos Aires? And I was clarifying that they are, in fact, both cities. Yes. Yeah, well, see, that, that's what I thought. But then Tenta said that they were in Buenos Aires, and I was pretty sure they were in Rio de Janeiro, but I'm tired, and my brain was like... No, no, you're okay. Clearly, gotcha. Rio de Janeiro is in Buenos Aires in Brazil. Um... Yeah. Well, that's, well, there's the Buenos Aires that's the capital of Argentina. And there's probably oh, right. more of Good, them. good. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. But. Anyway, so. Let's skip back to Emil. Emil, you will emerge from the dirt as the sun has obviously gone down over the Australian outback. There's like a mesa somewhere in the background, you know, the classic look. Uh, there's, you know, the scrub brushes. You're certainly in very classical middle of Australia outback. Um, so is there any light on the horizon in any direction? Uh, besides I've... the besides the setting sun. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna give you. You can probably there's gonna be a little bit of moonlight tonight. Uh, I'll give that to you, and so you can probably judge an approximate like directions which way is a north, south, east, west. You think okay. that that you think that the mesa you can see in the distance is pretty north to you. Um. The rest of the directions, you can kind of judge from that using the combination of the moon and the uh, uh, setting sun. Okay. So the only thing of note is the mesa to my north. Yeah. There's not a lot else around you. It's pretty, like, open, just flat territory. You don't see any kind of roads, not even very rural ones. Uh, at least not nearby. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll walk to the mesa. That's actually a good idea. I'll get a get a more bird's eye view. Okay. 
Uh, you'll head to the Mesa. Um, it'll take you a little while to get there, as it's it's not necessarily the closest, but it's not uh, super far either. It's within range for you to travel to. Uh, it'll probably take a hour or two of travel, um, but you don't tire. Um, and you can climb Mesa all right and take a look around. I will need you to give me a perception uh, alertness. You know what would probably help having the game open? I forgot to do that. That probably would. I technically don't have the book open, but I've got the folder that the book is in open. So if I do need to like open it, I can't. Actually, you know what? I'll just click on it. So it's open. Oh, and great. Roll 20 logged me out. <laughs> I mean, I just realized, I'm like, well, I guess I could just click on it because it's right there to open the book. I mean, I got close to it. Okay. Feet. And perception alertness. Or is it mm -hmm. perception? Yeah, alertness. That's what I want. Yes. Difficulty six? Yes. Well, you're just kind of looking out right now and trying to see what you can One see. success. Okay. Uh, you'll take a look around, and it's the unfortunate thing that even with, like, your enhanced visions from your abilities, you don't see a lot. Um, the area is vast. If there are roads out there, there are no paved roads. There might be dirt roads, but you certainly can't discern between them. Um... You don't really see any signs of any kind of, like, rivers or anything. It's just a lot of emptiness. Fun. Uh, I guess I will... Do I have anything? You know what? I think it's time I go talk to some animals. <laughs> okay. Oh. I attempt to find the most intelligent looking animal I can find. I guess preferably a kangaroo, but... Uh, there's a wallaby that had like been licking your face. Uh, there's a couple more lot wallabies in the area. There seems to be like a small family of them. Um, excuse me. Oh, well, hello there. Good day. Uh, good day. Uh, I'm curious if you know where any human settlements might be. Uh, uh, human settlements? You mean place where humans live? Like you? Yes. Yes. Hmm. Well, I think I've seen some before. Can't tell you where. Uh, could you tell me which direction they came from or went from? Uh, I think I was down that way. Uh, she's gonna point south. Uh, thank you. Okay. I head south. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I'll head south. Alright, <laughs> your journey south will be um, one that is, again, not too difficult. You don't have to worry as much about like the environment or the problems that are going on here. It, it's just a lot of uh, dealing with uh, general nature and stuff. Not, not too difficult for you. Um, what is your kind of generalized plan for how long are you going to travel when you travel that distance uh, uh, you know actually why don't you give me a with survival actually that's a good call I just thought of that I'm going to say for this one we're going to keep it at difficulty 7 uh, this isn't the easiest environment to live or find anything in uh, it's not the most difficult either well, it's one of the most difficult, but for I mean, survival, are... but not for 
<laughs> yeah, like, but not for finding things. Yes. For, for the kind of survival you're rolling, no. <laughs> yeah. You don't need to find, like, food or water along the way, necessarily. You can just, like, be like, Hey, wallabies! And they can show up and you'd be like, <laughs> you know? Just like uh, Samuel in Every Rat in Existence, where he's like, Hey, rats, what's up? <laughs> Betray their tribe. <laughs> He does that all the time. He eats so many of them. Uh, See, I feel I feel bad betraying their trust. I'm just gonna hunt them regularly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, you'll kind of get that. Um, you'll you'll kind of manage yourself pretty decently, heading uh, on a southerly direction, uh, keeping up with that direction. Uh, you'll make note of, like, a few things along the way, uh, various, uh, landmarks that you can kind of point out. Uh, you will come across, like, a small stream that's along the way that you can even, like, uh, uh, I- I- encounter and, uh, kind of, uh, follow for a bit. Unfortunately, it disappears eventually into the desert. It seems to have just been like a rise in water that came up uh, from an underground source and then eventually went back down into it. Uh, unfortunate. But uh, you'll continue along the journey for... It's going to probably be, at very least, a, a, a night. It might take you a few nights of travel. You're not sure how exactly how far the settlement is, and you know this place is massive. Um, I'm going to say after about two and a half nights of travel, in the distance, you're going to see some lights. Unnatural lights. You can press onward and you will find a small settlement in the middle of the outback. Um, there seems to be an easterly west, east-west road that goes along there. Um, it's got, like, a gas station, uh, a couple of houses, a bar, uh, a general store. Not much else. I'll go into the general store. It's closed. It's the middle of the night. I'll go to the gas station. (laughs) Um, the pumps are set up for, like credit card usage because you know it's the middle of nowhere but relatively but you know modern day they've managed to set it up at least for uh credit card usage but otherwise it seems like the gas station is not being attended to so the pumps are usable there's two of them uh one that seems to be specifically uh uh normal gas and the other one which seems to be diesel Douse myself in gasoline and set myself on fire. No. There you um, go. <laughs> <laughs> Pay attention to me! <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, I find a house. Okay, there's plenty of those. Most of them are dark. It's the middle of the night. Most folks seem to be in bed. If there's even one with a light on, I find that. If not, I'll go up to one at random. Uh, I'll, I'll look for an hour for one. I'll look for about an hour for one with a okay. light on, just to be less. I will light. tell you, there is one place that seems to be a little bit of happening. The bar. Oh duh! I don't know why my brain skipped right over that one. <laughs> uh, I'll go to the bar then. Okay. All right. Uh, it's probably a little quieter, just because, though. It's a bar. It can be out, people can be out late. It's not quite as late as uh, you would consider. Uh, so yeah, you can find yourself at the bar. There's probably about like uh, four people there that seem to be drinking. Uh, uh, two that seem to be playing some kind of card game. Another two up at the bar. The barkeep is there, and he seems to be like you know. Uh, you know, he's polishing a mug, you know, very quintessential barkeep. Um, and it's like, uh, Oi, good day, what can I do for you, stranger? Did you hear your car coming up? Uh, yeah, uh, my, uh, car broke down in the middle of the desert. 
Oh, um, then, uh, he's actually gonna, like, you know, pour you a glass of water. It's like, here you go, mate. Uh, you need anything? Something to snack on? Uh, uh I, I'm fine as far as food goes, uh, but, uh, do you have a phone I could use? Oh, sure. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, he's gonna, like, you know, like, open up a register, get out some change. He'd be like, there's a payphone in the back. Uh, uh, thank you. If you need something a little better, uh, um, you seem to sound like a tourist. If you need a call international, I, uh, Brian, you think you can wake your, your, your old man? I, I think he's got a sat phone. Uh oh. Oh. Well, I, I paused up for a second there. And I don't think we're good. Yeah, you did. Okay. Okay. I said, I'm going to try and call the sat phone. Yeah, he's like, uh... It probably requires a scene shift. Yeah, well, it's like, uh, he's like, Brian, you old man, you think he's got a sat phone? Here you go wake him up and bring it back. You wait here. Uh, drink some water. Uh, Brian will go get his old man. Or at least the sat phone. If, if you need a... That way you can maybe call someone international. I'm sure you got some problems. Uh, they do have yeah. a pay phone. Uh, if you need to use the yeah, payphone, it's in the back. Can payphones not, can payphones not call internationally? I thought it was they just an extra probably charge. could, but it's a very high charge if you're trying international, and he only gave you a little bit of coinage. Uh, he might not actually have enough coins in the register, technically, right now for an international call. Mm -hmm. My character, my character actually does carry money on him. <laughs> Yes, you probably have some American money on you. So, mm -hmm. so I'll, I'll. Can, can you exchange some of? Uh, oh wait, but you said the register itself just doesn't have much. Uh no. Uh, he probably, he's in the middle of nowhere. He probably keeps his prices too rounded to actual dollars, so he doesn't have to worry about coins ever. Uh huh. You know, <laughs> you can see the price board. It's actually like rounded off to like Australian dollars, the amount. You know, it, there's no like coins involved. <laughs> Um, so he probably has a few in the drawer, and maybe, like, occasionally emptying the payphone, but I'm guessing, like, the payphone doesn't get a lot of use either. I mean, it, it, it's a, this is a way, wait, uh, wait, wait, stop, city, I'd almost call it, in the middle of the outback, some place for people to get gas, maybe a drink, or some food. Yep. Um, is call and collect still a thing? Uh, I don't know. I'm kind of curious now. I'm going to give you a big old I don't know on that one. United States uh, and Canada. Companies provide reverse yeah. call service to Australia. Um, <clears throat> there's some collect calling in Australia still, it seems. Uh, collect calls can't be on landlines anymore from the United States or Canada, at least through Verizon or AT&T. Um, so I'm guessing that collect calls are fa basically dead in the in the U.S. Canada region. Um, oh, Australia, yeah. Um, it doesn't sound like it's completely dead in Australia, though. It's out of um out of popularity. But the problem is you'd be calling America and America doesn't accept collect calls anymore. And also you probably wouldn't know the number to use. Yes, because it's the Australian yeah, collect it's, call. It's, yeah, Australia's <laughs> is not zero like it is in America. Yeah. Okay, uh... Yeah, uh, well, I mean, if there's a normal phone I could use, I could just uh, give you some money for the trouble of the costs. 
There is an international reverse call that works going back to the United Kingdom. I don't know if it works going back to anywhere else. I think he was offering to pay for basically the use of whatever normal landline the yeah. bartender has. Yeah, if you have a landline yeah. to somewhere in Australia, he's offering that. Uh, they have someone with a sat phone that's like that. Like Brian is going to go wake his father who has a sat phone. He's probably the guy in town that has one for whatever reason. Uh, you know, uh, Brian, who is obviously like a twenties, like late twenties, early thirties, some guy. You know, he's gonna go get his the sat phone from his father um, or his father and the sat phone. You're not sure which. Uh, and I mean, if you want to wait for that, it, a little, back in a little bit will be. Um, an older man uh, with a with like who's uh, looks like he's kind of like a little loosely dressed. He just kind of puts something on. Uh, he's like, "Oh, you, 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 the guy that got trapped up in the desert, lost your car." Yeah. All right. Well, um, guessing you need to call home and make sure everything's all right, etc., and all that kind of stuff. I, I, I understand. Uh, look, um, I got the phone here. Um, it's not the greatest one. I haven't gotten a new model of one for some uh, for six or seven years. Uh, it works just fine, though. It, it's like, you know, an old model uh, satellite phone. It works just fine. Yeah. So, who are you calling? Uh, I'm going to start by calling uh, the, the other sat phone. <laughs> <coughs> okay. Um, then let's pause you here, because I need to figure out where Nathan and Samuel will be in effectively three days. Yay! Nathan. Yeah. Uh, you'll enjoy your rest in a Vietnamese farmer's mud basement. Yep. Uh, but you'll you'll emerge uh, in the evening. Uh, they'll probably be saying something to you. Uh, I I don't know if there's confusion with them anymore, or your presence is still in effect. I I don't know how that would work. Do you want me to use it again? I know they're not really gonna well, do well... much. <laughs> okay. Their possible confusion of your existence here. And vague recollections of you hanging out in their basement are not enough for them to be, like, hostile to you, especially after your presence, I'll say. At most, they'll just be confused. confused. Yeah. <laughs> like the, oh yeah, there was a weird American man in our basement. Why did we let him stay there? For the day? Well... I'm not taking anything, so mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about that. Yeah, and Samuel will wander in in his own leisurely Samuel way. Yep. All right. Um. <clears throat> All right. I'm going to attempt to. Like, is there a road in this town or to this town? Yes, it's dirt. <laughs> Yeah, I figured it would be dirt. Um, but there's certainly a road hmm. leading out of here. Um, there's a couple of roads that lead out of here, probably, I'd say. You're not sure which one is to civilization and which one is maybe to another. You don't, yeah, you're not really sure yeah. which direction to go on on said road. There seems to be a couple is of... There... You can tell one of them is a major road in comparison to the others. Still dirt, but it's two vehicles wide instead of one vehicle wide oh boy all right uh do any of the nearby houses huts whatever have a car mm. uh this one probably has like a like old uh truck that seems barely working and you know it's mostly like a like, like a, a, a messed up flatbed. It's kind of one of those things where it's like... 
like a 1960s truck, except it's been like you know massively overhauled. Like the back was re was one point removed and replaced by another back that seems to be able to hold more stuff. Okay. Um. I mean, most of these houses probably have some kind of vehicle like that. Okay. Um, I'm gonna find. I don't know someone who looks. Uh... at least more smiley than confused um all right you can um i mean most people are like going to bed now because they're farmers so like everything's getting yeah. quiet very quickly got it uh any bicycles uh sure uh, if you kind of look around for a little bit, because this is like a like a area of like maybe a, a dozen different farms that seem to be around each other. One of the farm has a bicycle. Does it have a basket on the front or two seater or? It has like a basket on the front. We'll say. All right. <clears throat> um. Samuel. Um, front or driver? Uh, I can change into like a rat or something. That would be ideal. I think you can do that, right? Um, Does he have enough, uh, protein? He's like a protein of five. I'm going to check just to make sure. I think just like you, he can also animal shape. Let me check. Uh, yeah, he has a protein of five and an animalism of five. He can transform into an animal. <laughs> like a rat or a bat. Uh, how about something like a cat that that I might conceivably have as a pet? Sure. Excellent. Mm, actually, only gangrels can turn into things other than the normal things. Oh, so it's a rat or a bat. Yep. Rat, oh. bat, or wolf. Mm. Good thing you have a well, wolfhound. That's fair. Uh, and the wolfhound would probably be able to uh, run alongside the bike, wouldn't it? Sure. I mean, All right. Gangrels have to learn how to turn into other things. <laughs> All right, so you're going to go biking along. Which way do you want to go? Um, uh... I'm going to say of the ways. it is a north-south-ish road. Um, let's see. Well, well both then probably I'm may to... head toward civilization, I will say. You're just not sure how far. Yeah. I was going to say north is probably a good plan, because south, eventually you'll probably... Actually, south would probably hit the coast. And at the coast... There's probably going to be a port at some point. At which point I could get information about it. Mm -hmm. Also, didn't you say the the our sat phone allowed us to uh, figure out where we were? Yes, your sat phone. I was guessing had some form of GPS to it. Um, I was saying you are. Was that Androka, maybe? No, that was for Leslie. Oh, I need a, I need a different map. I need one that has, uh, like, a scale on it. Uh, how, Google, why aren't you showing me a scale? Oh, there it is. Okay. Now I've got the scale in Google. It wasn't loading up before. Um, you think... So you are approximately 40 miles uh, you are probably relatively close to QL14C you're probably about 10-15 miles from that major highway that travels along the coast of the border between Cambodia and Vietnam it actually passes back and forth between it it is a major highway. Uh, you, If you were to head north, the largest major city would be a few hundred miles away, I'd say. Well, there's Kon Tum. 
Contum from your location would approximately be like 50 miles if you headed north. It's a little farther, but it would be uh, 20, 20, 20, it's like 70 miles to Ho Chi Minh City. Ho Chi Minh City being the north capital. Or... That's the south. Though. No, no, no. I mean, oh, that'd be south. Yes. Okay. But that'd be the capital. Uh, Kantum is a larger city or larger place, but it's still not a huge city. Like Ho Chi Minh City, that's a big city. It will definitely have an airport. Uh, yes. All right. Uh, then, the other uh... place that will definitely have an airport is Hanoi, which is all the way in the north. Yeah, no, not going there. Yeah. <clears throat> all right. Then I'm going to punch in the sat phone and, uh, Get on the bike and start going south. And, or, following the road towards the main highway. Yeah. I would say, like, and if you're I'm looking gonna... on this map, uh, Buma thought you're near that in the middle of the south. Um, you're, like, towards the Cambodian border from there. So, yeah, you can take the bike path and head towards, uh, the major highway. Um... It certainly will take you a little while to get there. And then it is a <clears throat> pretty big road. Um, it's a, you know, a marked highway. It is, I, I'm going to guess it's paved. Whether or not it's anything like a highway that we would recognize, you know, mixed bag. But it's paved. Yeah, regardless, regardless, while I'm on the bike, I'm going to call up Candy. <clears throat> oh, Nathan, honey, how's it been? Oh, very confusing. Um, so, due to a lot of very confusing circumstances, I have ended up in uh, central Vietnam. How'd that happen? Is that place locked down? I'm fairly certain it is. So, I'm going to need to see if you can figure out how to get me, at the very least, to Ho Chi Minh City. Give me a second. What's up? Mm -hmm. <sighs> yes, this is going to be last. Well, that's always nice. Someone switches out laundry mm. and then leaves someone's laundry down there rather than brings it upstairs. Mm. Mm -hmm. Always anyway. fun with that, this. Yeah. Not fun. Anyway. anyway. Yeah. Uh, I can see if I can arrange something in Ho Chi Minh. I might try to be able to contact someone. Say a relative of mine uh, has been in the country and needs to get out. Uh, private plane-wise. I might be able to arrange it, send for the private plane to go there. I'll try working on it. You got all, all your right. money and stuff so you can find a place to stay, hon? I, um, I do, right? Probably. I mean, I have my wallet. If you didn't lose your wallet in the uh, afterlife, I think you're fine. Check. No, you didn't. Nope. I, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I, I do have my wallet. So, um, somewhere <clears throat> in, in Enoch's shadow, there's a pair of pants left over by Ron. <laughs> a pair of dirty pants. Yes. Specifically. Uh-huh. All right. Yes. So, also, if you could uh, arrange a cab, um, I am on my way to indicate highway here. Okay. And perhaps if you're interested, we can arrange for this to be less of a uh, a front. And this is absolutely not the time that I had expected this, but um, I would enjoy being a part of your family. 
Mason. What? Wow. Now, I don't have a ring uh, handy at the moment, but I will find something appropriate for you if you would be amenable. I certainly would, honey. I certainly would. I just hope you're okay with some open times, because, you know, I just can't get away from my parties. Oh. You know me, Candy. <laughs> Seems like we're always on the same page, honey. Mm-hmm. What? <laughs> well, then. I look forward to perhaps another vacation to Hawaii in the future. <laughs> All right. What? <laughs> I can see Oliver slash Leslie breaking in the universe nearby. Uh -huh. Somewhere uh, halfway across the world. What? <laughs> I just felt a strong disturbance in the fabric of reality. <laughs> mm -hmm. The twisting undul undulations of the shadow realm are reaching out to me. <laughs> and they express terrifying images. Alright, um, sure. It'll definitely be much later in the evening. Uh, you'll have to wait for a few hours, so it's going to be post-midnight by the time a vehicle will pull up to where you're at. And so right. it'll be a few more hours into Ho Chi Minh City, where certainly you can arrange for a hotel. I'm Excellent. That's what you're going to do. Uh, Handy will let you know it will be a few days to negotiate stuff with the Vietnamese government and stuff. You know, probably some money has to change hands, etc., etc. Uh, there might see that I can help with. There might be now that I'm in Ho Chi Minh. There technically might be a quarantine period still. I'm assuming that they want to do that. You know, uh, so. While you are in your effective quarantine, uh, I do want you to make me a uh, wits finance roll. We'll say we'll say difficulty six. This isn't too difficult. Just to earn a little bit of uh, governmental uh, wheel greasing. Uh, would that be finance or politics? Ooh, I'll say your choice. Whether you're going on the more bribe route or more bureaucracy route, up to you. Could I use manipulation or charisma if I'm going politics? Hmm. I'd say probably in this case, uh, again, I'll give you some options on that one. If you're going politics, you could use manipulation if you're being a little bit more underhanded. Uh, charisma if you're being a little bit more, you know, open-handed. Okay. Okay. You got some options here, and both, all three will have various different difficulties. I've kind of got in mind and, like, uh, different results. Okay. Then I'm going to go with manipulation politics. Okay. What's the difficulty? Uh, or just roll it? Keep the manipulation politics. Put that at difficulty seven, I'll say. Okay. All right. Um, you managed to get in contact, uh, granted, like, you know, with everything kind of a little locked down still in this country, it's very early on in a pandemic, you kind of have to, like, give some calls, uh, reach out to the right people, maybe using, uh, Samuel's he set up to use some, like, Skype or Zoom meetings with a few, uh, people and get some translations, uh, with a couple of Vietnamese officials and talk to them, you know, talk about, you know, some things, you kind of work around it, maybe see there's some places that, you know, like there could be some donations to a few funds, like, uh, one of them seems to like, you know, want to, oh, working on getting this children's park up and running, maybe a small donation towards that children's park would help grease some wheels, but it seems as though post your quarantine period, a private plane can come into the local airport and then in said local airport with you. But they still want that quarantine on this end to make it seem uh, good and all, you know, just to make sure everything is all right before you leave. Oh, of course. And certainly because they don't trust that uh, America's going to do anything at all because they're currently probably not yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but during your time there, you're going to get a call. 
<clears throat> From a number you do not recognize on the sat phone. Um, Samuel, can you check this? Uh, mm -hmm. Australia? Do you know anybody in Australia? Um, not that I know of. Although I didn't know anyone in Thailand either. Do you think it's safe to answer the phone? Uh... I mean, I suppose since uh, it's a, a private number, very few would be able to get it. Yeah, he's going to uh, agree with you. Okay. Neil? Hello? <laughs> you are still muted. <laughs> uh, so, hello, uh, who is the, which one am I speaking to? Uh, this is Nathan. Um, hey Nathan, I'm, uh... Presumably in Australia. Yes, and my, um, car broke down in the outback, and I'm in the, in a town in the middle of nowhere. Hmm. Because I assume there's people nearby, like, listening in. <laughs> Unless I could step out back, then I'd be more blunt. <laughs> out back. <laughs> Tantus, would they let me step out back with the phone? Uh, probably not. Okay, then I'll be then I'll be more uh, weird. Oh, lost your car. Okay. Um, do you know where in the outback you are? No. Oh uh, um, wait, I'm gonna zoom into the map and choose a city in the middle of nowhere. Uh, that sounds like a great city name. Oh, come on, load map. Uh, you're in uh Papunya. Yeah, I'll be like, what's the name of this town again? Uh, I'm in Papunya. <laughs> sounds like a place with lots of uh, potential. Perhaps oh, that's even you could audible blink. <laughs> uh, I found a better city that's also in the middle of nowhere, and I think you 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 we're we're gonna we're gonna switch it to Bidel. <laughs> Papunya was too close to things. Bidel is like hundreds of miles from anything. I'm gonna look it up. All right, I have no idea where that is. Samuel, can you look up Bidel? Uh, uh, it's technically Western Australia, slightly down from the middle of the outback. Um, it's hmm. relatively close to the Great Victoria Desert Nature Reserve. Hmm. That's 50 miles to the south. All right. Um, are you reasonably safe and comfortable there? Uh... I mean, yeah, I could stay here for a while, probably. If necessary. Uh, you are 12,600 kilometers from the capital of Perth. <laughs> All right. Um, can you ensure that you are safe to remain there? It shouldn't be... I could. I, I'll. I'll. I'll find some lodging. I have some money. Okay. Excellent. Um. I'll. Uh, I'll see if I can get you a number, uh, of someone. That's somewhere larger, but uh, I'm thinking that perhaps the best plan would be to find a way to send a plane to the middle of nowhere that you can connect with, rather than trying to go through all the uh, silliness of actually going through customs in Australia. Yeah. Although, I might see if I can get a ride to somewhere um, less in the middle of nowhere. Alright. 
Um, perhaps if you stayed in Viadel for uh, a day or two so that I can set something up where you have a way to contact us. Uh, that, that could work easier. as well. All right. Uh, shall I the, contact you back on this number, or is there... No, I'll just... Uh, I'll figure it out. Don't worry. Yeah, uh, you're currently Very in well. the... A la Krulka Roadhouse. <laughs> there we go. Best. Best, best of luck to you. Best of luck is on the Serpentine's Lake Road. <laughs> Click. <clears throat> yep. Well, uh... My friend said he'll get be able to get something arranged to get me a ride back. Is there somewhere I could stay in this town for a couple days? Uh, I got I got a shed which has got caught in it. Good but enough. When my cousin comes in to stay, sometimes I let him use it. Good enough. Uh, mm -hmm. I will probably end up sleeping in the day since I've been walking all night. It's getting light. Why don't you get some drinks in for us? Join us. Very well. <laughs> I'm glad I have eat food. <laughs> yes! <laughs> they already give you water to hydrate yourself from your desert adventure. Now they're giving you beer. Yep. Which is not the best to have if you're dehydrated, but whatever. I don't care. It doesn't affect me anyway. No! Alright, uh... So, now... Good question. We... Mm -hmm. Am I able to uh, find prostitutes in Ho Chi Minh City? Probably. I'd say probably. Um, You're probably gonna have to make some kind of negotiation check because it's probably a little bit more difficult. They are under some kind of lockdown and getting out the uh, people of the night uh, they're, they're now doubly uh, risking various uh, problems. Manipulation streetwise? Sure. I'm going to say difficulty 8. Okay. Excellent. I'm trying... I need to... Yeah, I need to figure out the risks of uh, drinking off someone here. Because I'm at five blood. Mm -hmm. That includes so, the since... three days that you went to... Uh, or did you want to eat a kangaroo or something in the meantime? Oh yeah, you can find some people. Wait, it took me three days? I said it took you... As well? It took you two and a half uh, nights to get here. Got it. Okay, so that would be, uh, I, yeah, no, I, uh, how, how much could I have gotten off a of kangaroo or something along the way? Uh, let's see here. Uh, anime. So I'm guessing persuasive applies, which means that I got four successes. Can I also feed Samuel? <laughs> sure. Yay! Yeah, he'd be fine with rats, but, you know. Excellent. Uh... Let's just say when I fell into the desert, I had six. So if I'm at, I'd be at three, unless I could get at least like one or two, then I'd be at four or five. I'm trying to figure out. Uh, I know they have a list of like generalized animals. I might have to look in the book. Oh, great and powerful book! Please tell us information and allow it to be found in a relatively fine spot and not me having to search all around to discover its secrets. Though, I'm guessing it's probably the latter. That is not helpful. Also, the book needs to work. Uh, let's see. Uh, vessel, uh, werewolf 20, average human 10, child 5, cow 5. This is to drain them dry. Mm -hmm. uh, child 5, cow 5, dog 2, cat 1, plasma bag 1, bird 1 half, bat, batter rat 1 fourth. Those are like the sizes. Alright. Um, 
So it's certainly not bear sized or even camel sized. Uh, let's go for. Uh, if you want to devour a wallaby, you can get two. It's medium dog sized. Okay. A larger kangaroo, probably three. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm at five then. Let's just go with that. I'm yeah, you, you, you like, tore it. into something, you know, you, like, grabbed it, you hunted it down, you're like, ah, 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 as it, like, squeals and, you know, like, does its thing. Uh, it's a lot different than Samuel's just bite a rat and suck it out because that's quick and dirty. This has multiple blood pool points. It takes a couple of turns to devour it. Yep. Rat's dead right away. Also, you yep. might want to find a way to clean up after it, or else the people around there are going to wonder if they start finding some bodies. Oh, I was talking about along the way when I was traveling here. Ah. It took a couple days. Yeah, in the middle of the outback, um, just having some, like, a couple gotcha. of wallabies and just... I mean, it'd still be weird to <coughs> if someone went out traveling and found an ensanguinated wallaby, but not <laughs> as weird as right around the town. Aliens. <laughs> yeah. With that being those, said, those though, men yeah, from Laws like, came down and, and sanguinated our wall of ice. Yeah. But yeah, if they ask me where my car is, I'll be like, I have no idea. I've been wandering for three days. I've lost it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was off roading. I don't know where it is. <laughs> uh huh. All right. So, you've gotten some blood. Nathan's gotten some blood. But now, now we have to turn back to our good friend Leslie. Uh, uh, who, if I found the correct place on this map as to where you were before. Yes, there you were. Zoom and enhance. Zoom and enhance. Get a mascar. Uh, was Madagascar. Oh, down over there. Whoops, wrong zoom and enhance. Uh... Anyway, we'll take our break here and then we'll go to get Madagascar. So I can ping it on this map here and not be blind. Anyway, so if you need drink, snack, bathroom break, go ahead and do it. And we'll be back in a little bit. We return. All right. Now we switch to Leslie, who's enjoying his time inside um, a, like, building you broke into in uh, Italam... Uh, I Itam Polo. Polo. Oh, yeah, I'm Itam enjoying Polo. his rather strong tone for being curled up in the air vents. <laughs> you are curled up in the air vents in uh, Itam Polo. Certainly not the most comfortable rest I've ever had. No. Uh, but you'll make it through the day just fine and find yourself in the air vents of a... Um, I think you chose uh, a building that seemed to be relatively people-less and kind of in the basement area, so like a small business you kind of broke into, I mm -hmm. believe. What's your plan now? That's a great question. Uh, I already tried calling Nathan. Uh, I guess I'll try calling him again when I wake up. Wait, no, I left a message, didn't I? I don't remember. Mm -hmm. I'll try calling him again when I wake up. Okay. Ring, ring. <laughs> uh, Nathan, we'll skip back to you. Uh, post Candy waiting around for a taxi. And you get a call. Do I have service here? <laughs> <laughs> you, you... Hello? Oh, actually a Hello? It, it, like, you're connects, actually... but it's a very bad connection. You're actually awake this time, I see. I didn't. Oh, wait. Oh, no, no calling cross calls. Maybe I would be better off just leaving a voicemail. Choice. Real. Click. Uh... <laughs> wait, you had a smartphone, didn't you? Samuel's got a satellite phone. Yeah, but I don't remember if I have the number of that or not. I'm gonna send a text. Leave voicemail. Call sat phone. 
or wait for a night. Pretty close to what I was going to text you. All right. Uh, um, yeah, I guess I'll just call the staff home. I don't know. I, I assume I have its number. Sure. All right. Uh, you'll get in contact with the staff phone. Hello. What? Hello, oh. I can actually hear you this time. Wonderful. And you're awake. You're better. Maybe you want to... Come back. Yeah, come back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Moment Sorry, just playing with you. What? Uh, where Where have you found yourself? Uh, I'm in Madagascar. What about you? Yeah, <laughs> Thailand. Vietnam. Oh, Vietnam. Oh, sorry. Vietnam. Good uh, Lord. Oh, have you heard of the On others? my way to... Ho Chi Minh City. Well, Emil is um, haven't heard in from the outback. Yet. Haven't heard from him yet. Australia. Oh no, I'm I'm not sure where Emil is, um, and I haven't heard from Don and Ryan yet. Wait, he uh, Samuel is with from me. Emil? No, because that's later on. No, because this is yeah. My, yeah my that's took that's three, in like I two days. Three days in your he, wa- he wandered. He wandered through like the outback two. for three days. Uh, so he, he is currently, uh, so yes, it will be a little while before he makes the call, that call. Mm. All right, back to Nathan mm-hmm. and his response. Yes, I'm, uh, working on getting myself out of here, uh, with Samuel, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, what are okay. your plans? Well, where did you say? You said you don't know where Emil is. Do you know where Don, uh, Ryan are? No. Wonderful. So the three of us, at least, have been thrown in multiple different spots of the world. Good, good. Uh, good question. I haven't figured that out yet. I've never exactly investigated the going ons in Madagascar. I never expected to find myself here. Uh, All right. So far. I'm just going to try and find the largest city I can and make plans from there. I've got some money, but... Uh, fair enough. Although, um, if you are able to find sufficient... Um, what's the word? Wait, you're in the middle of Madagascar. You have reception? I, I found a town, a city. It has a couple of hotels. Apparently people actually visit here. It, it's well, like... It has tourists things in this okay it's not even a large town this this is a tiny little town but it has a cell tower okay um do you have sufficient funds to uh stay there perhaps and is there sufficient hunting and feeding should be more than enough funds are less of a concern i can just find places to sleep hide in the shadows you know the deal Fair enough. I, I will say, this place does not really seem um, used to hiding people from the sun, given that there is always sun, and uh, the hotels did not exactly have suitable protection. All right. Well, um, if you feel the need, then uh, go ahead and find a- another city, uh, which is more... Uh, amenable to your needs and you also might want to find uh, the nearest prince and present yourself as they might be able to help I'm not sure of the uh, situation in uh, Madagascar so I will uh, that's the issue I not knowing who may or may not be in control here, I cannot exactly just present myself. Ah, fair enough. Well. So, current plan, um, either hire a vehicle or just run. Apparently I can run rather fast. I've never actually tested it until now, but wait a second. Hmm. Uh, current plan is to make my way towards the largest city. I believe the name was Antanananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananan
Antonin, the largest uh, largest city in Madagascar. Uh, Antananarivo. Yeah, right. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that is that the right one, Antananarivo. Sure. I believe so. Yes. It's likely going to be some days before I can get there. But it's two hundred and fifty miles from where you're at. Well, I can run approximately 50 miles or kilometers, I can't remember which, per hour. I will uh, ask the voice in my head later which one it is. <laughs> uh, so, all right. it's anywhere from roughly 5 hours to 12? Something like that. So, not even days. A day or two and I should be there. Excellent. That'll give me time to uh, make it to Ho Chi Minh and figure out what options we have from there. Perhaps the others will get in touch with me. I hope so. I would be rather curious to find out where they landed. You'd, you'd think they could have warned us that this would have happened, but no. Would you expect that crazy young or crazy old man to warn us what was going to happen? <sighs> you know, I'm not sure that he even knew. He may not. I'm not sure that many people know what happens when you leave the land of the dead. I feel like I should have had some explanation. It, it, it is rather close to the abyss, but nothing. It's rather odd. Uh, I will also request that you keep your use of your shadowy yes, abilities yes, to, to a aim. minimum. I know you are all worried about me becoming a daemon. Uh, it's more that at this moment, uh, we have no way to remain in contact with you conveniently. And... I would rather be able to help if such a thing were to happen, rather than hear about it on the news, so to speak. Well, worry not. It's, again, in an area where I do not know the rulings and going on, so I'm not about to plant the fact that there's a wild sombra running around. I'd rather keep my head attached to my neck. Fair enough. Well, be careful of cameras, and I will talk to you in the next couple of days. Ever so cautious. Talk to you then. <laughs> Careful cameras. <laughs> oh. Alright. Alright. Jokes, uh, Nathan. What's your plan now? There are plenty of roadways. Like, there are roads that lead off of here. Um, Is there only two feet? Hang on, so I gotta check on this. So I just... Um, I don't know the exact details, but like if I drew a straight line from Itempolo uh, up to, it, it might be three hundred. Chances that is four hundred and sixty-two point nine miles. So my guesstimation by just using like, uh, wait, let, let me just check here. One, two. And that's with a straight line. <laughs> five, six. Now this map is not very accurate. From it's okay, Samuel fed me Kambario. false information to screw with me. I'll get back at him later. Like, cause like I'm looking at here, like using the little like fifty um uh fifty mile like connection from there to there. Or is that kilometers? That you're on. Uh, Google. Uh, no, I've I have it displaying in both. Oh, okay. Then I. In kilometers, it is seven hundred forty-five kilometers. And that is a straight line, or is it that like? A that is a straight line. line. Ah. That, that, then I'm just reading this map term because I, I look at this and it doesn't look like eight of are, these like things down at the bottom. Maybe are you is. on Google Maps? Yes. Okay. If you want, what you can do is right click on the start location, uh, and click. Uh, oh, hang on. I, I gotta clear my. Yeah. Right measure click Itempolo and measure distance, and then left click on Antenna Na 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 Oh, hey, that's so much convenient. Yeah. Much easier than trying to eyeball it. Yeah, my eyeballing it was not working well. I was originally I, like... I mean, you were close. You were just shorter by about half. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Neat. I think we worked out that I run at 50 kilometers an hour. So, two hours per hundred... 14, 15 hours of running total, so at least two days. You can go 50 if you have a good open area, though. Yeah. 
uh, you're not probably always going to make that, judging by the terrain you're going through. Like, if you're on roads, yeah. you could do it, but then you're noticeable. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Like, when you were going along the beach, well, I gave you the benefit of the doubt, because the beach is probably very beachy and probably not too difficult uh, to, mm -hmm. like, you know, make the distance. Noticeable, but I can't... I am running at night <coughs> and with enhanced senses, so I can hear anything coming a, while, a mile off. I'm going to say, more. with your speed, you certainly could, if you wanted to right now, you could head for Tolara, to uh, uh, to Toliara, yeah. that next big city to the north, which would be on a major highway, which means if you wanted to look into acquiring a vehicle, that would be a point to do it. Well, <laughs> Nathan said he needs time to get to Ho Chi Minh, and I don't really want to leave any trail. Even mm -hmm. a paper trail. Mm -hmm. um, again, I lo know literally nothing. As a curiosity, well, no, I probably shouldn't know. I'll find it after I'm out of, Ma out of Madagascar. I was implying stealing a car. <laughs> you could get to Tolari, you know, where there fair, are the cars. But you could just... Do you remember the last time I tried to steal a car? How that went? I mean, I also remember Samuel's amazing car chase in England. He managed to get away from the cops. Yeah. See, I can run very fast. <laughs> and it doesn't involve me uh, breaking into a car and probably setting off the alarm again. Would there be an alarm in this area? I don't know, but the last time went poorly, because apparently, despite have, yes, I had the wrong alarms. one. But in, in a Madagascar? Probably some do. I mean, I gotta be honest, there's not a lot of cars near me that have alarms, and I'm thinking about that, and on Madagascar, there'd probably be even less percentage. Mm. Wait, really? Cars Wait, are... Wait, what? Cars are built with alarms. Like, they almost have to be disabled for you to not have one, or broken. Well, in Madagascar, I could see there would My... be some alarm before, but where you live, Tantus? No, there should be... Pretty much every car should have an alarm. No, our vehicles don't. Newer cars do yeah. have them. I don't know when it became standard. So all yours are like 90s or earlier? No. But huh. if they have alarms, what? they're not enabled. What state are you in again? Pennsylvania. All right, I'm just going to leave that to the side for now. Um... I will say, like, if they have alarms, they are not enabled normally. Oh! Uh... Like, I think one of the vehicles does i definitely know i think my mother's vehicle has well, no no, no. Alarm, i, I, I don't mean normally. specifically yours like yours might not but vehicles in your area most certainly have alarms mm. you, you, there just might not be much car theft or people setting off their alarms i guess because you don't generally hear a car alarm the... unless something's happening yeah that's true but, but uh like, car alarms have been standard for like i think the thing is is there like it's like with my mother's car it has an alarm it's just not on normally they don't yeah. start with it on and so unless you activate it it's not on what almost all oem uh, yeah. installed from the factory alarms are typically <laughs> armed and disarmed with the vehicle's keyless entry remote on many vehicles the key cylinders in the driver front passenger door activate switches so that when a key is used in the door, the alarm will arm or disarm. Some vehicles will arm when the power door lock switch is pressed with the driver's door open, and the door is subsequently closed. Some will disarm if the ignition is turned on, often when the vehicle is equipped with a key-based immobilizer and an alarm. More likely your mom's came default on? Because, like, cars, by default, the alarm is on, and it, I don't know. Your we all have used, it off so I'm guessing no, because we all got used vehicles. Oh, well... That could influence it too. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. If so if if you buy a used one where someone before you disabled it, yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, which I mean, just like uh, it says, it can be like disabled through the like the key fob, which means you can turn it on and off or something with the key fob. I don't know. We just never have had like alarms. I I bumped into the vehicles before. Nothing's ever gone off. I bumped into vehicles in this area before. Nothing's gone off. Oh. The the ones I was describing are ones that usually track whether a door is opened or a window is pierced. Ah. So different than the just, like, if you touch it, alarms. Yes, those are aftermarket alarms that have sensors. Uh, the OEMs are just, like, if you open or break the car, 
the the the, the wee wee. Well, I'm guessing because you are if you're in Madagascar, the vehicles are definitely at least a decade, if not two decades, behind where you are now. I, you know, that's the un- unfortunate part about the third world. They tend to have a lot of older cars. So the fact of that means there probably is a lot less likely to have any kind of alarm then. Even if it's a tourist location with a cell tower? <laughs> the town is small. I gave it like a cell tower uh, with bad reception, and it does have a few hotels. But I have no idea whether it would have alarms in the people that live there's vehicles. I gotta be honest. I don't know. Uh, At any rate, I have a much safer way to do this, so. Um, I'm how, trying to tell you your running isn't safer. It's going to take longer by a lot. Because you're uh, going to have to avoid vehicles. See, that that's me, the player. Mm-hmm. But... Leslie would know that he has to avoid running and being seen like that because that's very obviously supernatural. And either that means going through cross country, which you have to move at slow speeds. How how much driving in the middle of the night have you done, Tantus? A lot. It is very hard to see things at night. Like it's easy for you to just step off the side of the road and keep going. Yes, but I mean like you would have to notice vehicles and then get off the side of the road and Depending on the road you're taking, it might be very busy, is what I'm trying to say. Even at, late at night. Like, right now, if you wanted to navigate, because you do not have a map, you probably want to go to a big yeah, city. Do. Oh, that's right, you do have a small map. I stole a map. You did st- steal a map of the area. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot you stole that's a map. That's why I'm, I'm quite confident in doing the running. Hi, if you want to take, like, small roads, um, I mean, I'm just saying, the map you have, I don't know, do, 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 I don't think we said it was the entire map of Madagascar, did we? Because that I, wouldn't I have would a... assume it would be, that's how maps are sold. Um, then it probably has a portion of the roads, like, if I look at the size of the... If you Punching. want me to steal a car, I will just steal a car. <laughs> I'm just telling you, stealing a car would be a lot easier. I'm just giving it to you. If you want right, to I... run, it's fine. What's the freaking check? It, it, it was uh, the... What, was it Larceny? Larceny does not exist on the sheet. What the, what the hell was it changed into? Either subject or Haven't we been using security? <laughs> We've been using security. It, okay, so secur- security was changed into larceny. Then security. Um, deck security. security. Uh, I just say deck security to break into a vehicle and stuff and hotwire and all that stuff. Alright. Like, technically what happened to security was split into uh, larceny and technology. Linguistics was kicked out. Yeah. Alright. I have stolen a car. You've stolen a car. Congratulations. <laughs> like, like, it's just the fact that, like, you running creates a lot of issues for me, and that's why I wanted to get you away from it. <laughs> because I'm like, okay, now I've got to figure out you running at very high speeds along that roads. What does that mean? Avoiding the vehicles. What kind of checks do I want there? What's the r- route you're going to take? Also, because the fact is, I forgot you had the map. I gotta be honest. That's why I was moving on to that. And also, if I check Madagascar, it is like 200 miles long. I do not think if you take if you have a map of the entire country, it's gonna have all the all the small roads. Actually, it's more than 200. I'm sorry, I forgot. I have to like uh, measure distance from here. It is 400 and wait, 270 miles wide. And a thousand miles tall. Yes. If you have a map of the entire... uh, You probably have a map of Madagascar, like an entire one, and I'd say maybe you found a map that was like the area of southern Madagascar you were in. I... Which would help. But it's like... See, my argument would be that I live in Canada. Hmm. Uh... Our provinces are as large or larger than Madagascar. Okay. And uh, a map 
most certainly has all the major roads. More than one province on it. Oh yeah, but does it have all the and, major roads? Does it have all the minor roads though on it? Yes. Really? As long as you're not going into like literal. If I pulled out a map of Pennsylvania, I gotta say like there's a, there's 95 percent of the roads. Well, maybe not 95, but like maybe like 50 percent of the roads are not gonna show up on it. All right, America's weird. <laughs> you guys have a lot more little tiny things going on yes. than other places in the world do. We are, a, like, a, my town here is a, like, network of tiny roads. It would not yeah. fit on a large <laughs> map. My town barely yes. fits on a map of Pennsylvania. It's the small dot that's, like, it exists in this place. Yeah, but that's what yes. I mean. You're, but you Madagascar... guys have so many more people crammed into one state than most other places in the world do in the same. We can afford to show more detail, because... Except Europe. Well, except Europe, but then again, you, that's its own deal. But then the countries are, like, small states, usually. Anyway. Yeah. I mean, yeah, like, Germany's pretty small. Mm. I mean, my, my Scott's yeah. got a pretty decent population. It's got, like, uh, 27 million people. Granted, you know, that's not a huge amount, but for, for the, the island of its size, not bad. I, yeah. I'm just saying, like, there's the, there are there are plenty of roads that are marked and plenty of roads that aren't marked, and that's what I was just trying to say. I wasn't going to say that they're, like, because, again, like, when I zoom in on this, like, the like it takes me a lot to zoom in and get all the roads. Uh, that That's all I was trying to talk about. Because there are roads out of Etempolo, but I re it requires me to zoom in a lot before they all show up. Mm -hmm. And then the scale has to go down to one mile before they show up. Are there roads this through? is Google, though. I know, it's Google, so it's hard to say what an actual, like, touristy map would be. Regardless, if you're finding... Are you finding your way to the capital of Madagascar? Yes. You can find your way there. I, I'm, I'm, I'm done right. with figuring out how you get there at this point in time. <laughs> you find a way to get there. You magically teleport from one location to another. Shadow walk. I'm shadow walking the car <laughs> through the abyss. Screw I just take the car into the abyss and go for a joyride amongst the shadow demons. <laughs> He's using the arcane technique of annoy the GM to where he doesn't care anymore. And on your right, if you look out the window, you'd see a horrific abomination. Isn't that just lovely? Look at its beautiful appendages. Oh, I enjoy that! I will take a picture <laughs> using my camera of flesh and human suffering. <laughs> oh, what man. kind of film does it use? <laughs> Blood! Polaroid! <laughs> oh, Polaroid. Like Polaroid. <laughs> That's better than mine. <laughs> he, he, he likes the old. He likes the old timey aesthetic of a Polaroid. He's a cultured shadow demon. I will give so... you a great review on Yelp. The review site that is filled with pain and suffering. Yelp. <laughs> I would think they'd have a different version of it just for them. <laughs> Probably named. <laughs> well, that was the entire idea. It was. It was still called Yelp, but it was like Yelp. You know, like it's holy. Like... Oh, maybe there's good. Yelp. My like my those old cartoons. Now. Yes. All right. So. So you find your way. I... What's your plan once you get to uh, wherever the hell we were saying you were going to? Eh, eh, eh. <laughs> And ta na 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 There's too many na 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 with lockdowns and whatnot happening. Especially uh, Madagascar locked down really early. It was very true to, uh, you know, the video game Plague Inc. Uh, Madagascar locked down immediately. <laughs> oh god, they did? Wow. They shut the hell down. Yeah, I guess, you know, they've been, they, it's like someone was like playing, like, I, I just imagine like someone's there like playing Plague Inc. on their cell phone and they're, 
leg. Wait a second. I know what we must do. <laughs> Shut it down. <laughs> Shut it all down. Yeah, if I remember right, there was like survive. no traffic leaving, <laughs> entering or leaving Madagascar. It's so. like Madagascar will survive this apocalypse. And then, and then, like earlier this year, they're like, "So, how is everybody faring? Have you all died off yet, so that we may repopulate the? I mean, we may help <laughs> rebuild the world." Become the one true leader. Uh, yeah, so I'm, kind of I'm guessing. I'm guessing it doesn't take Dawn and uh, Ryan terribly long to get in contact since they're in a major city. Um. Hmm. Let's see here. Dawn and Ryan. Dawn just has to like seduce somebody and then steal their phone cable. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm but gonna I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say something important about Dawn. Dawn is really bad at the seducing part of things. Dawn just normally Dawn probably would go in for their seduction and just punch the guy. Or the or just punch the person. Gotta be honest. Yeah, but about if they're that. really drunk. Um so the misadventures of Dawn and Ryan will be narrated. They will find themselves in uh, an area of uh, Rio de Janeiro. That is probably not the best area of Rio de Janeiro. Probably on the poorer side. Uh, it, so those of you who have played Rainbow Six Siege, far from far from far from Vela. <laughs> uh huh. I see what you're doing. <laughs> you're welcome. I also wanted to mention well, it, during their misadventures, they stumble upon this strange. Uh, <laughs> Counterterrorism team attacking a favela, and they go, "Nope." <laughs> I could do that, but no. Before seeing all of its walls bust down and nothing's left standing, <laughs> but it still stands. And apparently, like there's like they're gonna be able to... also, also a very spooky Brazilian woman who just goes around <laughs> like scaring at people shitless. <laughs> yes, just appears out of nowhere. Holy <laughs> <laughs> just literally just appears behind you. Talk. Where are they? Oh, what the hell are you talking about? Uh, I'm a vampire. I, 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 this is the wrong game. I don't belong here. Uh, she just get the fuck out whenever she shows up. <laughs> Cab out of nowhere. Uh, the crazy Brazilian lady. I mean, they are in Rio. It's appropriate. Uh, anyway, no. Uh, they they are. Uh, I'm gonna give them that they're gonna find their way out eventually, but it's gonna be not as easy for them just because it's the two of them <laughs> ryan's <laughs> probably panicking uh john usually relies on someone else to tell her to what to do so it'll probably take her a while to figure things out even then it's like oh well we need a charging cord uh we also need money uh there are probably some misadventures with stealing some things uh i'll say a couple of run-ins of the law uh, and after about five days, uh, you will receive a call from Dawn. Hey, it's, it's been a bit. Hi, Nathan, it's been quite a while. Was I, was I uh, Cockney or, uh, I don't know what accent I was for Nathan. It doesn't matter. You know what? New Yorker, because she's from New York. Uh, Nathan, it's been a while. Uh, that, that, I don't know what the fuck that accent is. Nathan, it's been a while. Hi, um, I, I, we found a charging cable and charged my phone. It took you five days. Okay. I'm a crime um, lord So now. where are you? You're a what now? <laughs> well, um, it turns out, uh, Ryan and I are now Brazilian crime lords. Okay. Uh. Of course would you, you like to yeah would you like to start a partnership with me uh, i'm i'm well, why, why are you calling me if you're already a crime crime lord well we're incidental crime lords yeah look now this okay. is this is not how you properly distribute distribute your drugs you got to do it this way look trust me this will get you more in the white collars Wow. 
did you need advice? Because it sounds like you're doing fine. More like, um, well, where are you? Where's everybody else? Uh, well, uh, Emil is currently in the outback. Leslie is somewhere in Madagascar, and I am currently in quarantine in <sighs> Thai in uh, Vietnam, uh, waiting for my plane. We're in we're in Rio de Janeiro. All right. Look, there we we attempted to go and find some and uh, find a, a charging cable or get some money uh, I, I ran into a mm -hmm. nice man uh who uh, i thought was originally like a drug dealer or something we thought that'd be a great person to steal like a charging cable for turns out they were a police officer uh we ended up breaking up a kind of sting operation uh ended up falling in with a gang of brazilian uh drug runners um after uh, assisting them with a operation of grabbing some stuff from the port, uh, I finally got a charging cable, and while we were charging, uh, we ended up getting into a good old firefight with the cops twice, and uh, we rescued a bunch of their members when their old leadership got killed, so now they put us in charge. Hmm. All right, so... um. Like I said, did you need any help, or, um... Yes! What do you How need? do I get out of here? I'm going in too deep! Oh. Um. Well. Um. Hmm. Do you have a... a I presume you have a safe-ish place to uh, spend the days, correct? Found a nice hotel room. Okay. Um, did you charge it to the credit card that you stole again? Mm. Or did you charge it to Ryan's? Neither of us had credit cards. We used cash that may or may not have some blood stains on it. <sighs> I am incredibly disappointed in you. You should have traded it out for non-bloodstained cash before you used it. However, excellent work in finding the cash in the first place and in using the cash rather than credit cards, uh, given that you're involved in uh, certain activities. Also, uh, were you able to check whether this line... Samuel, is this line being monitored? <coughs> He'll give you the thumbs up, it's okay. Okay. So, uh, Drug Running 101, 102, I suppose, you seem to have been doing a uh, good job of it so far. Um, do you have a safe house to which you can escape should your hotel room be uh, stung? I don't know. Okay, well... Why don't you work on doing that? Uh, make sure that your cell phone is charged. Uh, could you put Ryan on? Mm -hmm. Oh, hi, Nathan. How's it going? Hey, Ryan. Can you make sure that Dawn's phone is charged as much as possible oh, sure. all the time? Turns out, uh, you, you know, basics of Midwestern and knowing a little bit about the uh, white-collar, uh, you know, uh, drug problems is really useful in uh, Brazilian uh, crime syndicates. I didn't know that. I would imagine. Turns out these folks have all been, like, uh, targeting all the poor people. I've been telling them to target the rich people. Well, as I said, you, you two seem to have been doing well. Um, perhaps we will uh, let you retire down there. Uh, I got two machine guns. Following our... Oh, uh, any any mini guns? No, not yet, but uh, I got the feeling that Dawn's not comfortable here. I'm not really comfortable either. The people are really nice, and the food's been okay. But the, the shooting has been uh, a little uh, disturbing at times. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Let's uh, let's figure out how to get you guys out of there. I just oh, yeah. need to make sure that I'm, uh, I'm not actually sure why I we're have... in charge either. I think I think you know what I think we're just part of the dumbest crime group possible. 
Well, that can be incredibly dangerous, as uh, those tend to be the ones that get taken down by the cops first. So Yeah, and um, uh, there's been talk of, like, a uh, all-out gang war or something, and it uh, doesn't uh, doesn't bode well for my uh, feeling of safety. I, Dawn's been concerned with trying to, like, maintain a presence, but, uh, you know, I just occasionally yell something and uh, go hide in a corner when I'm not needed, uh, and often to just walk out holding two guns with this bandana on, and it usually works pretty well to keep people alive. I don't know why oh they find me scary. <laughs> you know what? Uh, Look, I'm in over my head, man. Just... I'm in over my head. I don't know what's going on here. This is going crazy. I understand, and you probably need a lot of pants. Well, I... Uh, my pants are permanently brown. I just wear brown ones now. And that smell? That smell is the smell of uh, the dead on me. I'm just keep claiming that. Okay. It's well, worked out well. Um, I, I need to I, get I in touch with... I haven't changed in days. Well, that's something that underlings are for, Ryan. Find one that speaks We're English. We're not you, Nathan! Today. We're not you! <laughs> you don't have to be. Hold your guns, wear your bandana, and say, I need some nice pants. Okay. And one of them should go scurrying off. I'll do that. And if they don't, if they don't, tell Dawn that you'd like her to get you some pants. So, if we should happen to, um, look, I've been trying to get Dawn to, like, grab a bunch of the money and, uh, go to the airport, but, uh, it's been hard to get away from, you know, the gang we're heading over. Like, even when we're resting during the day at the hotel... There's usually a couple of guys mm -hmm. in the room next door watching things. Uh, and mm -hmm. I've been having to keep an eye on them, Don, and do stuff during the day. I've gotten, got like four hours of sleep in the last three nights. Man, I'm losing it. Okay. Don's, Don's so much more happy-go-lucky than me. I don't know how she does it. Uh, I think it's because she's insane. That makes but sense. But remember, Ryan. Remember, Ryan. You're insane, too. Yeah, but not the same kind of way. I just got horrible emotional well, scarred issues that caused me to lose my bowel movements and be afraid of pretty much everything, but I also talked to a spiritual cockroach monster from beyond the universe. And I've also been genetically engineered to be a super soldier that's technically a giant, eight, nine-foot-tall cockroach that spouts out stuff. I'm eating garbage again. While I'm a human. I imagine that might have something to do with why you scare people, if anybody sees you do it. Uh, I mean, it's regardless. an emotional thing, and I know it is, and I shouldn't, but it, it just, it makes me feel better. I guess it's the roach inside me. Have you, have you talked to the Great Lord Cockroach over the last few days? No, I haven't tried to commune with him. I didn't think he knew okay. anything about running a gang or working with a gang. I'm not even sure how we ended up with them. We accidentally you know helped what? them out. I... I think that communing with the Great Lord Cockroach might help you out. So why don't you do that in the evening while Dawn is there to uh, to watch over you? Okay. Okay. Can you come and save us, and Nathan? I am going to work on that. Thank you. Can, uh, what 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 are you going to do? There's two things. Intimidate someone to get pants and talk to the Great Lord Cockroach. Okay, the intimidating to get someone pants is, is just for fun and to okay. feel better. Uh, mm. then, uh, Great Lord Cockroach. And make sure and... Dawn doesn't do anything stupid. Uh, nope, I don't know that you can uh, keep that from happening. So the other thing was to make sure that Dawn's phone is charged. <laughs> oh yes, Dawn's phone is charged. Gotcha. Okay. Charge phone. Great Lord Cockroach Meditation. Yeah. All right? Yeah. We're also really and... bad at finding cell phone wires because this is the third wire we had to find, and the other two were, like, not the right size. Dawn didn't say that, but, you know, I... Nathan, I think we're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I would... I would love to disagree with you. 
So, you're going to talk to the Great Lord Cockroach and make sure Dawn's phone is charged. May I speak to Dawn again? Sure. Hi, Nathan! What's up? All right, so I'm going to talk to Candy and try and figure out a way for you and Ryan to get out of there as uh, efficiently and effectively as possible. Ryan's going through some shit, so if you could watch over him while he communes with the Great Lord Cockroach, perhaps he'll have some advice for you. Um, or perhaps he'll just feel a little bit better. Also, I've given some instructions on how to get new pants, uh, which it sounds like uh, pants in a shower might be particularly useful for him. And if you could watch over him in the evening, that would be great. Hey, Nathan, when we leave, is it okay if we bring a couple of friends? They're orphans, so they don't have anything better to do, and they're really awesome. When you say friends, do you mean goons? More goonish. Miguel and Nancy are really nice people. All right. How old are they? Uh, I think Miguel is 20-ish. Nancy is younger-ish. I think that's past the range of Morphin. <laughs> okay. I, I haven't really so... asked. They're just orphans who joined the street gang. Okay. Miguel's well, really good with how... knives. Oh, neat. Well, uh, we'll figure that out once I've uh, figured out how to get you out of there, all right? Okay. Uh, I'd really like you to try and make sure that your cell phone stays charged because otherwise I'm not sure how to get in touch with you in a safe, secure way. Okay. Oh, hey, Nathan, I gotta get going. It, it seems as though another gang is planning an attack on us, and we have to counterattack them before they do that. Uh, yeah. Okay. Vamanos! Be <laughs> you careful hear some in the names. background. That is still Spanish. You got, to, you got to either learn Portuguese or just order us in English. Sounds like you've got everything under control, Dawn. Keep it up. Click. We need to get them out of Rio. <laughs> I feel bad for Nathan. Everyone's like, Nathan, help us. We're all trapped around the world. <laughs> to be fair, I at least am literally trapped. <laughs> I, I am in a country I that mean... is literally locked down. <laughs> My, uh, like... I'm trapped in a different way. I'm in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, you're just like a like, down back. You're just I like... can, I theoretically have a way to leave, but I've also, I also don't want to do it and have been told not to do it. So, because. It's just funny because everyone's like, who's the best person to help us? Nathan. <laughs> well, he's always been Mr. Moneybags, Mr. Answers for the entire time. And now it's like. <clears throat> The only other person you could ask is, like, Samuel oftentimes has answers, and he's just sitting there uh, on his computer. He's probably FaceTiming with Wick right now. Uh, speaking of Samuel, um, who is... This is something I would have asked, like, the first day or two. Sure. Uh, who is the prince here? Or what okay. is the situation here in Ho Chi Minh City? Ho Chi Minh City. I can look that up. Uh... Uh, Vietnam, World of Darkness. Hey, there we go. Uh, okay. Both good and bad news. Uh, good news. Always both. Uh, you don't have to worry about a prince. There isn't really a vampire presence. Uh, bad news, mm. there's an incredibly powerful Hengi Yokai, which is basically Eastern uh, Changing Breed presence in Vietnam. Uh, the Vietnamese uh, beast courts are probably not friendly. Makes sense. Yeah, 
because uh, the uh, war pissed them the crap off, the Vietnam War. And now they really dislike tourism because they mess up a lot of stuff in the, in the area. Yep. Well, I will be keeping my head down. Um, definitely sticking with prostitutes and taking, like, one or two blood points off of each. Mm -hmm. Just so that I can keep myself fed, but also not be, by any stretch, a an obvious presence. Okay. You know, <clears throat> I wasn't going to ask earlier because I didn't want to know have it affect me, but I'm kind of just curious. What is there in Madagascar? Uh, oh, supernaturally wise? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You've got to deal with one of the Libons, which are the African vampires. Uh huh. Hey, explain that one. Uh, the Libons are an independent group that are a faction of vampires that exist within Africa that have always generally been at odds. The boundary tends to be around Egypt, a little less than that, you know. Egypt still falls under the, the purview of what you would call your traditional Western uh, vampires that originated from the Middle East and moved into Europe, because that's kind of the area where they came from. Um, <clears throat> the bloodlines of... Uh, Africa as a whole are the uh, yeah the Libon, uh, which is a um, originally during the Dark Ages they were called the Libon, but they've existed into modern day now too. The Legacies. Um, you met a member of one of them. Uh, uh, what's his face? Uh, the large African man who didn't speak much. Sabu. Sabu. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he told you what he was. He did not. Okay. Um. Hmm. Huh. Right. So, how would they react to me being there? Hmm. They might not be too bad. Can you roll me a... I'm going to put non Miguel and Nancy's name in the chat here. Can you roll me a... Uh, what was our supernatural knowledge? Was it occult intelligence? I think so. Sure. <clears throat> I'm going to put this at a higher difficulty. Uh, which you would have gotten anyway. Because you've got a 10 in there and nothing below, be nothing below a 6. So, hell, you know about it. Um... Damn. You know the group that occupies Madagascar is uh, known by two names. Um, on the continent, they are known as the Z Dun uh, Dundu. Dundu. Uh, that is the modern version of them. In the past, they were known as the Ramanga. And both of these groups are the same, but said to have originated from Madagascar. The thing about them is they use a very similar power to obtenebration. So it's assumed that maybe they are originally an offshoot of the Sombra. Uh, the Libons are said to be that, but the Libons all have their own like uh, um, myths as to where they came into existence. So it's kind of hard to tell if they actually are related or not to be uh, European-style vampires. You know, mm -hmm. like the Kwai Jin are obviously something completely different. The Libons function fairly similar, if not the same, as traditional kindred. That's why it's thought that maybe they're connected, but you're not sure. Uh, so this group that's here uses Aizana, which is effectively of tenebration. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. um, they're known as the Shadows. Uh, if, they're, if you're talking about the Zuidwunda, that's their nickname. The Ramanga's nicknames were Puppeteers or Leeches, which was derogatory. Mm-hmm. Uh... Huh. Want to impact the others on the south? Blah, 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 blah. Just trying to figure out some 
general weaknesses. Uh, yeah, the Zidunda do not cast reflection, just like you do not. Hmm. Uh, they also must touch their uh, be touched by their native soil or be greatly weakling. So they're both like similar to La Sombra and Sinche. Hmm. Mm hmm. Hmm. Okay. Yes. And they are trying to. Uh, currently, the Gruhai are the are the <laughs> rulers of the Liban, the the legacies, kind of the de facto ruler, and they've been trying to supplant them. Hmm. Yep. So there you go. There are vampires in the area. Would they be friendly to you? Yeah. Who knows? Because they could go either way. Okay. Ah. So. Uh, and for for Emil to know, there are vampires in Australia. Uh, Camarilla control, controlled uh, Melbourne and Adelaide, uh, but Adelaide uh, has fallen to Quaisian influence since the nineteen uh, since nineteen ninety nine. Uh, Sydney was independent. Uh, Brisbane uh, is controlled by the Sabbat, and Perth is controlled by the Anarchs. Well, uh, on the upside, I'm a gangrel who are kind of independent right now. Oh, yes, and you are closest to Perth out of those cities, which is Anarch territory, so they might be, they might be reasonable listening to you. But yeah, my character doesn't know enough about the politics outside of the U.S. to know what's what. Mm -hmm. So if he goes to a city, he'll have to play it by ear. Yeah. Are you heading for a city? What is you? What? Is, okay. Uh, Nathan. <laughs> I don't Nathan know if we're gonna take a second. For, if I take a, a second break days. here, we're not gonna have time. So I'm just gonna play through to the end. We'll just do the one break because we did start a little late. Uh, so we're, you know, we're only hit the two and a half hour mark, I think, since we started about half an hour late. So that should be fine with only one break. So, uh, yep. let's play through. Um, Nathan, I'm going to say, after your quarantine, you can get back to New York all right. You're going to have no more issues. Okay? So wherever you want to okay. go in the world, you have gotten past your issues. Emil. Sweet. You're in civilization. You know where roads are. <laughs> what the hell is your plan? From here on. So, I mean, Nathan told... I would contact sure. Nathan again if he doesn't get back to me in, like, two or three days, which he said he would. So... Yeah. During the quarantine, I also am going to try and figure out how to get a, uh... Hopefully a clandestine flight to the middle of nowhere in the outback... Um... To pick up Emil. There are probably some small airports, so what you can do is you can arrange for a smaller plane that's more local to Australia to come in from one of the larger cities, and if you want to send your private jet to one of the larger cities, you could probably do that. Um, certainly yeah, not was... somewhere like Perth, but there's probably plenty of other large cities. I was thinking more like a... Like, finding a way to convince someone or some entity mm -hmm. to send, like, a, a non-flight pathed unofficial plane to the middle of Australia and give uh, Emil directions to get to the correct spot where the plane will pick him up and then have it leave okay um so certainly uh you could probably do some connections and arrangements get a very more con uh clandestine vehicle out there i'm not gonna say that's impossible certainly possible to send a vehicle out there that could pick him up, get him under the radar to another location. But that's going to be within Australia, I'm going to say. So you can get him out of the Outback. Mm. Getting something that would be clandestine from outside of Australia, very difficult. Because again, mm. like, 
Um, most vehicles that would fly under the radar tend to be smaller planes, you know, that can fly right. that low. Smaller, slower planes. The things that can cross the ocean tend to need to fly higher. Or land on a boat. Yeah. You could. Yeah, I'm yeah, thinking so like. If you, if you could get like a single pilot, like a, a single passenger plane, you know, like a biplane, to pick me up and bring me to an airport where I can then pick up a larger plane, which is less clandestine. <laughs> or if you wanted to go the boat route, go to like some place and then get a helicopter to a boat or something. That would arrange three vehicles then. I'm just saying, like, you I probably... was thinking, like, call up somebody who happens to be vacationing in at the Great Reef with a yacht or something mm -hmm. and ask for a favor that they uh, go pick up a friend of mine. Um, I'm sure there are probably some people that you might have mild connections with that would have uh, could be in the Great Barrier Reef. I'll say sure. Or at least someone close also, enough to it. Also, I could probably get someone from this place to, I could probably pay them like a hundred bucks to drive me to like somewhere, if necessary as well. You could probably, yeah, you definitely get a, a, uh, someone to drive you to a larger city, to a place that has an airport. Because there are some airports or across place the ocean. Or even just a place near the ocean. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was more thinking like some place that doesn't use uh, customs. Yes. Some place yeah. where Honestly... Emil's lack of identification or specific Certainly, funds. Yeah. If you wanted to ask The reason Emil... I mentioned near the ocean is because a helicopter can travel from near the ocean, pick me up, and then go back to a boat. <laughs> Yeah, it'd be a lot easier. Right. I will tell you this. And helicopters are usually on yachts. So, yeah. Like, there are a lot of pe rich people with yachts who can have a helicopter. From where you are, if out. you wanted to, I'm going to have to measure this. Measure distance. Yeah, I'm definitely trying to keep Emil out of the uh, official travel. It's gonna take a while. The farthest, to, the, the the closest to getting to the ocean would be heading south, which wouldn't yep. be impossible. Uh, that is. Uh, two hundred thirty nine point four four miles. Uh, so two hundred thirty nine miles. We'll say taking roads might even be four hundred miles. Four hundred miles, doable in a night. You could come to someone like early evening and be like, "Hey, look." Um, it, it, or, or ask someone like you know like look um, I'm still set kind of on a night uh, you know schedule for resting just because of you know like um, jet lag and and how I was traveling at night during the desert kind of got me stuck on it I would like to get out of here as soon as possible and you could probably arrange for $100 plus gas money to get someone definitely I think here to drive you down to let's say uh from where you're at to uh you uh Eucla, we'll say down on the coast near the Nolbar national park yeah, um, I was looking, uh... that would be relative it's not straight south but it is a pretty decent sized place along the coast and there's a number of places along the coast then and that's directly on the coast then getting Nathan to arrange someone from the Great Barrier Reef kind of area, let's say someone on vacation with a yacht that has some connections to you, to head down to that area and pick him up would probably take some days. We'll say like maybe That's half a it. week before he gets there, but... If Cock you want to... Cocklebitty, <laughs> funny town name, uh, is near the ocean and only a nine-hour drive, so that might be the one I'd go for. Yeah, so Cockabitty. That, that's kind of... It's pretty much, like, the same angle that I made, only, like, like west instead it's of just, east. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but it's also... It's just got a shorter route, which is why... But so, yeah. So, nine-hour drive over the night. Arrange it with someone paying for gas. You know, paying you know paying for $100, $100 American plus gas money. They'll yep. do it. You know, that, that's a good profit. You know, the gas money yep. um, plus $100... They'd say gas money for both ways, so it would cost you a bit, 
But again, like, uh, that's a couple of tanks. That's not too expensive, I don't think. You know, a couple of tanks both ways. Um, you know, you'll be able to afford it, I'll say. You, Nathan, got, you wanna, you've you got a pretty good stipend, I'm pretty sure. Um, and even if you don't have the cash, I think you probably have some kind of credit or banking cards, and there's probably an ATM in their roadhouse. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. My character actually does have an income. <laughs> so, we can definitely arrange for a helicopter, for the yacht with a helicopter to come in and pick you up from one of these towns if you stay there for a couple more days. Okay. So, you'll probably, you'll be sailing home, I guess, the long way. You may arrive back in New York similar time to Nathan, and he's taking a two-week quarantine. <laughs> Yeah. Because you have to not only, like, get there, wait for the vehicle, and then they have to sail partially around the world. Or around the world, technically, I should say, actually, because it's southern Australia mm -hmm. to New York. Yeah. Well, I mean, they could go to, uh, like, Los Angeles or something. They could go to Los I mean, Angeles, and then you could get a flight from there. You at least have basic American ID. Yeah. Yeah. All right. But you will manage to get home around the same time as Nathan. You'll be arranged for it. Uh, Leslie. You've made hey. it to the capital of Madagascar. That's hell yeah. What's your plan for getting home then from there? It's locked down. It's a great question. I have a suggestion that Nathan could think of. And I don't know... Okay, actually, well, hopefully it's better than the idea I have in my head. Mystical GM Samuel will be like, "Hey, uh, Leslie's having some trouble getting out there. Why don't we just send that uh, yacht over to Madagascar to pick him up?" Yep, that was that was one of my thoughts. Well, that's half of my idea, so that works. Mm -hmm. What yacht? Yeah. I, I missed a yacht apparently. Wait, uh, wait. there's a yacht with some rich snobby dude. <laughs> Who probably does some business in New York? Who has used Nathan's gym? Hmm. It's probably and like a combination gym. of blackmail and, you know, <sighs> actually I, knowing the guy. It's probably and... like some young twenty-some, you know, like a uh, trust fund kid who's you know father owns a whole bunch of businesses, who's like grandfather solved it, and he's just been like you know yachting around the world for the past couple of years but he was like a big like back in his teens he was a big prime spender at nathan's place you know so it's been a while since he's visited but he's going around the world on his like stupid yacht tour um you know and he happened to be in the area of the great barrier reef or at least or yeah he, close enough to australia that nathan could be like you know like hey you know if you do this for me you know uh it'll definitely you know you could probably give him some money or something, or like some kind of or, favor. Uh, or clear your tab. <laughs> clear your tab, and you know, offer you some like a, a few extra times or something that you know. When incentives. You get back to, yeah, some incentives when you get back to New York. And if yeah. you want to, you could arrange to have him swing by Madagascar and go by way of the, the long way around. So instead of by oh, LA. Sec. Is it still longer to go? around Africa than it is to go across the Pacific. Um, Give me one second. Sure. Oh. Um, well, let's see here. It probably is. Just go straight wow. to the Funny enough, that has more to do with, uh, less to do with distance, probably, and more to do with currents. <laughs> yeah. And around air, I'm just judging. Yeah, it's definitely a lot longer. It's like 14,000 plus miles versus 8,000, and those are pretty straight lines. You know, they're slightly curved lines, just for the... Like, that's like, you know, and boats are not fast. So, eh, yacht top speed. That's a question <laughs> that I'm going to look up now, if it lets me. Uh, 
<laughs> the weird questions that I have to ask on this sh on this show so very often. Uh, as soon as yeah. Google works again and I can Google yacht, um, av uh, maybe av I average traveling speed of a yacht. I'll use it on my phone because computer is being. I suspect. Bitch. I suspect all GMs are on some sort of government watch list. Uh, <laughs> average Writer. speed of a. Uh, of uh yacht. I've decided that the trust fund kid, his name is Eddie. Okay. Sure. I'm fine with that. I'll just put Damn it, I can't even put it in roll twenty shack because uh Google's being a bitch right now. Uh oh uh, let's see here. Yachts different speed depending on the type of boat, with mega yachts and ocean sports boats being the fact fastest at over 30 miles per hour. Uh, cruisers and deck boats falling second at an average speed of 23 miles per hour, and pontoons and sailboats averaging at 10 miles per hour. Uh, so between it tw normally 20 to 25 knots is a super yacht's uh, general speed. Uh, so if we'd say like 25 knots probably, is... Yeah, probably a cruiser or a deck boat if I had to guess. Uh, so that means, um, uh, well, this one is in miles per hour. But... Not... Oh, sorry, roommate needed me for a second. Two, uh, knots, two mph. Okay. What's happening? Okay. Uh, so yeah, you can travel about 30 miles per hour on the yacht, and it probably will travel 24 hours. So, I mean, like, 30 miles an hour. Hour over twenty four. Yeah. It's gonna be a while before I'm getting out of Madagascar, isn't it? It's good. That's Actually, something I was gonna bring if up. We have him go to Madagascar first, and then to uh, Australia. Then it might still be shorter to go to Los Angeles. What's True. his start point? I'll say somewhere in the Indian Ocean. I'll just say. So yeah, uh, he'll go to Madagascar first, pick up Leslie, uh, head down. Emil will get to spend like a couple of weeks eating uh, the local wildlife and uh, living in the dirt in that, whatever city he's in. Wait, do yachts go over open ocean? Yes, the mega yachts and yeah, super yeah. yachts do because they're gigantic. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah, and I measured so that even the flight. Yeah, so basically, so like, how long? How long am I hiding out in uh, Antananarivo? I'll say you got only like maybe like five days there before the yacht comes to pick you up because it's probably not that close. But it, it, again, like I estimated it could maybe make if it would go all out 720 miles a day, but that's mm. going constantly. So even if we say it, well, my, it, it, it could make 500. My character is uh, out in the outback creating a new urban legend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, this yacht is a much better idea than I had for getting out of Madagascar. Mm hmm. Uh, which would be uh, getting, <clears throat> I don't know if you've ever heard of them, but there's certain belts you can get for diving mm -hmm. where you can set them to keep you at a certain depth. <laughs> uh, and I was just going to go low enough that there was no sun reaching me, but high enough that I'm not getting crushed to death and swim across the ocean, which would have taken <laughs> I probably really... weeks or months. Yes. So yes, I was going to swim. I was going to swim up to, like, Somalia or something and then make my way up to, like, Saudi Arabia or <laughs> India. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, that, would, uh, that would take quite a while. As is, I'm still going to have to do that a bit to get to a yacht because nobody's allowed to enter or leave the islands. So. Yeah, so they probably want to... Wanna, you probably still have to swim out to the yacht, which would take a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I have to swim out into the ocean. Thankfully, I'm a vampire and I don't need to fucking breathe. I don't need to worry about drowning. <laughs> Me. Don't uh, I was gonna say don't don't you that, that's what the belt is a vampire? That's why he was getting a special belt. Uh, yeah. Okay, got it. Cause the the belt is to keep me from sinking to the bottom of the ocean and dying. Got In this it. case, if I don't need Uh oh. Breaking up to stay floaties. Which will be extremely dignified for Leslie swimming across the ocean with a bunch of floaties. Vampire tabs! I blame you for slowing it, me down right now. Is the um is the yacht person a human or a vampire? He's human. He's Eddie. Good. He's being intimidated into never speaking a word of my floaties. To anybody. Ever. 
Oh, dude, that's okay. I'm fine with that. Oh, Did not expect this. Okay. Oh, Shaw, you want to hang out with me and the babes? I've been no. cruising around the world. On... Is, oh. is this your life? Do you... What? I cruise around the world with the babes. It's radical, dude. Nice. <laughs> um, well, I won't be up here when the sun's out, but uh, otherwise, sure. Oh, you got like a skin condition or something? You gotta get uh, some rays. Sun. Severe sun allergy, unfortunately. It's rather disheartening, but I, I make do. Oh. Mm -hmm. Look. $2,000. Mm -hmm. Per person mm -hmm. for a cruise from Sydney to Los Angeles in 27 days. 27 days, yeah. Uh, but I think the cruise ship goes a little slower, though, too. Oh, no, the cruise ship goes a little slower and also makes stops in places for days. Yeah. And also doesn't go straight there. Yeah. So, assuming it's still going to be at least, like, maybe a week, two weeks or something in between there, I'll say probably, like, two weeks of travel overall for you, Leslie, um, including mm. picking up a meal. I got two weeks of hanging out on a yacht with the babes, so, you mm -hmm. know, not the worst life. Mm -hmm. that, that sounds like a bunch of nighttime parties. I'm, I'm what not... is your blood pool normally? Uh... How how what is my what's your sailing? maximum blood pool? Fifteen. Okay. Then probably you could make it do with only a few stops between some of the babes. Probab babes, I see. Yes. Yeah. Probab babes. Probably a few stops between some of the babes. Is kind of what I heard. Yes, it broke up a little bit there because I've been getting rid of the. Uh... For whatever reason, these White Wolf tabs have been eating them a lot today. I'm trying to get rid of them. Uh, so yeah, so you 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 should be fine. Or, or a meal can summon the dolphins, and you can eat the dolphins. <laughs> I I can't summon creatures. I can only talk to them. I'm just gonna say I'm at fifty. Uh, what's your animalism? One. Ah, then yeah, you can't summon creatures. You can only talk to them. Well, damn. What's your maximum blood pool, Meal? That yeah, it's like, I'm I'm just I'm just feeding up. That's also why I'm assuming that I'm pretty much keeping average blood pool. Yeah, what's your maximum more. blood pool normally? My maximum is normally thirteen. Okay, so yeah, you you might be able to make do in like a two week journey just because it's not quite a two week journey for you. It's probably maybe like a week journey or something. Uh... I don't know. Oh, but also, well, but also, I'm at like four. Mm -hmm. So catching you'll, up because I've been. You'll just devour a shit ton of animals before you go because you are going to be crossing an open ocean that will take time. So I assume like you'll have a pile of dead kangaroos somewhere. Okay, like I said, yeah, okay, you said you like were making, said, a... urban le urban making an urban legend. Yeah, I just wasn't sure how much I would be able to make that urban legend, but yes, I mean, okay. If you're saying I, was... I can fill up on blood pool, then yes, urban legend has been created. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm sure you've got hunting skills. You can go hunting. There are plenty of things that like you can talk to them and then convince them to stay around, and then rom 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 nom 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 nom, and then if you really wanted to clean up their bodies, you could just burn them. You know mysterious burnt corpses because then there's no sign that they were drunk dry of blood they're just a burnt corpse see you're telling a vampire to willingly start a fire yeah i mean i guess also, you could, <laughs> you could I, kick I, a I bunch of and... you could kick them into the local river to be eaten by crocodiles or something i guess i, I just went back in chat to catch up because i've been very out of it today and have not been looking chat um mm -hmm. i did even if i didn't have a map <coughs> i have a smartphone it can use Google Maps. <laughs> Once you have cell signal. I mean, the unfortunate thing about Madagascar is it's not going to have cell signal everywhere. You don't need it. You can download Google Maps offline. I forgot you could do that. Ugh. Man, the charges to your phone are going to be ridiculous, though. International charges. Yeah. God, why the frick are we messing up today? Anyway. Yeah. 
So, in the intervening time, we also need to figure out how to get uh, Dawn and Ryan back. Yes, so. you do, but you know what? You know what? I'm going to save that one until the beginning of next time. Because uh, as much as we didn't go anywhere, it was the three of you, and we got you mostly back together, which was the day's goal. Uh, <laughs> there was some chaos. other goals I was thinking about getting you to, but the chaos of, like, the insanity of all this was fun. It was. <laughs> Part of me feels a bit bad for poor Smoke and Muffin, just like, having no idea what you came into. That's okay. We have no idea what we're doing. It's fine. Yeah. I mean, just... to be fair, our characters were literally dropped into the middle of nowhere. We exited a Shadow Realm and were dropped into the middle of nowhere in a bunch of different places, and we had to figure out how to get back together. <laughs> yeah. See, yep. we were all in, basically, the afterlife, and when we left, like he said, we got dropped all around the world. One in Australia... Myself in Madagascar, one in, uh, well, two in Rio de, Rio de Janeiro, and two in um, Vietnam. 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 Mm -hmm. And in the at the of beginnings COVID. of, yeah, that, pretty much that, yeah. At yeah. the beginnings of the quarantine. Yeah. Yep. You, 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 are, you were last year in the, God, uh, you actually, by the time you get back to New York, it'll probably be when the American quarantine goes up. And so by the time you're all getting back in New York, I'm going to say we might have a time skip of you guys figuring out what you're planning on doing during the main part of the quarantine until kind of closer to summer, which then we can kind Spend of... Spend EXP? I think... See, I... I just hope the whole Enoch thing is not on a ticking clock because we are waste. Well, not wasting because we're doing our best. It's but. technically not because you have all the stuff and no one else really does, you know. So and good luck finding us to take it from us now. <laughs> I mean, there are issues with stuff. Anyway. Yeah, we'll worry about, like, time skipping and stuff, and I will consider right. EXP spending, even though I try to do it at the end of every story. This is a kind of, like, interim that you have to take, because I set up the quarantine stuff, and we're moving into probably the beginnings of the American quarantine to post-American main quarantine, uh, like, early summertime, when everything began to open up, and has never quite closed up the same again. Yay. Yep. Is it freezing up again? Jesus. What the hell is going on? I've dropped a bunch of frames here at the end. Um, shit. Freezing here and there. Oh, yeah. There it goes. Jesus. Something... I'm closing up all the stuff from that I opened for, like, maps and stuff, because I'm thinking one of them uh, was getting, like, a artifacting error and was just eating up some of my memory. Probably, like, an ad was running on one of the things I was doing or something, like, one of the information sites I was on. And I'm getting issues. But I think it's mostly cleared up. Mostly. Nope, still getting issues. Right at the end here. No fuck. Ha! <sighs> uh, Umbra, I don't think you're a mod in this channel. Yeah. No, I'm not. Is that one mod only? What is? Probably. Which one? Vamp vampire oh, Players one? Mean. No, it's a command. Anybody can do it. Oh. Okay, that's what I thought. I'm typing it in wrong. Yeah. It's, I don't remember. It's Vamp Player. Vamp Player. Yeah, Vampire. Vampire. I, I, I'm freezing up. I was trying to say, like, uh, it seems like it's a little open right now. Yay. But uh, I there don't know. There we go. Yeah. I can move. It looks like it's okay. I was saying that I don't know. I, I was like, I think w one of the tabs I had open from uh, researching stuff was fucking things up. And now that I kind of cleared it up, I'm hoping that that has fixed it. But, you know. Oh, boy. That, that was weird. Um, I'm just gonna sit here for a moment and not play around with that. That does not look good. Anyway, yeah, I oh, think we should carpe, end here. Upper. Yes, please shout out stuff before Worm. things die more in weird ways for me. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm Diamond Worm. Twitch.tv slash Diamond Worm. At Diamond Worm on Twitter. Worm's with a Y. Next.
Carpe. My links are in the stream chat, but mostly Same. at the Carpe DM. Mine are also in the stream chat. It, ignore the Twitter one. It never gets used. Uh-huh. Uh... -huh. uh... Me, Tantus Naravan Jacobin. Uh here a lot of days. Next D next stream, D D uh Thursday, eight PM EST for Children of Wrath. Uh other things. Mondays, like two slash three. Uh this day, two PM Tuesdays. Uh there you go, check out shows. <laughs> Before this dies yay. even more on me. Uh yay, bye. We be back next week. Bye. 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 Let me stop.